Okay, guys, so welcome to this week's webinar. What I want to do this week is talk about the OBF targets. The goal here is to ignite some thinking around the targets, and hopefully that thinking will drive some action around them as well. The game of life is what's wired into your brain. Have you useful beliefs or beliefs that are holding you back? The whole goal of this is that we create a growth mindset, that we can grow, develop, and become better people physically, mentally, emotionally, and really kick on with what we're trying to do with OBF. Just a quick word first around community change. Really good to see Rachel, Tom, uh, Michelle, whoever else who took on that um, NFL uh, diet challenge. You can see that they have done really, really well. You can see the physical changes in their body. You can see the mental changes. Um, I'm sure that they're going to talk to us next Monday night at 7 o'clock in the coffee shop next door to the gym. And I'm sure some of the feedback they're going to give us is going to be really useful for people who want to take on this challenge going forward. It's tough, but there's nothing in life that's easy that isn't tough. So you see that at the back end of that toughness, that perseverance and the will to actually make some change, you will see some change. And the three lads are living testaments to that change. They use the chronometer app, they've educated themselves, they've empowered themselves, and they are really uh, willing and uh, generous with their time, and they're going to pass that on to you. And that's a really uh, powerful thing, and I want to thank them up here for doing that. So the OBF targets, they're on the wall, and why are they there? Essentially, lads, it's really cool that some people are trying to nail a push-up or a pull-up, but what I want to do is I want to systemize this even better we want to make people even more accountable we really want people to kick on and become the best version of themselves we're going to do a little small case study uh column came into my head when i was thinking about this earlier on this morning i guess an awful lot of the people haven't seen the change in column because they've only seen the column that they saw when they walked into the gym day one but if they saw the column that i saw uh, probably about three and a half to four years ago who walked into the back door of my house and started training above in the garage, they would actually be in awe of the change um, in Cullum. And how did he achieve it? He achieved it obviously through his own perseverance and will and the longing for change. But I think there was some really powerful tips that he used that we're going to outline here as well. One of the first things he motiv motivated himself through the medium of running marathons and once he actually signed up to do a marathon and told everyone he'd done a marathon there was a massive level of accountability with that you don't pay x amount of money and decide to do something and then jump off the wagon again generally speaking if you open up your wallet to something your heart will follow it as well so uh, that level of motivation and accountability came from actually setting himself the targets so i'm not saying that you have to go and run a marathon and try and do all the, the majors or anything like that but definitely be forthcoming with what you want to do. Put it up on the Facebook page. We're going to talk about that in a while. Put yourself out there. And once you put yourself out there, it forces you to actually be that bit more accountable with it. The self-belief and confidence came through his change physically. I have no doubt about that. I seen Colin when he came into the gym um, three and a half, four years ago. He was definitely shyer. He didn't have the same level of confidence that he has now. Now he is confident. He's smiling, he's a ray of sunshine, he's a great energy, um, and he has an unbelievable presence about himself. And he's really valuable to the community, as are everybody. And I could have picked, honestly, 50 to 80 case studies, but Cullum just popped into my head this morning and I said I'd roll with that one. So the more you can perform something physically, the more meaning your words will have. What I mean by that is, if we try and tell our children not to eat sugar or not to eat sweets or... Um, just to try to be good people and we don't do it ourselves then our words don't have any meaning that's integrity integrity is the difference between what you say and what you do and i think that if you can perform something physically then your words will carry you off a lot further and transcend beyond just your mouth so i think that you know nailing uh nailing two or three push-ups nailing a, a pull-up whatever your goal is once you can perform that and once you can show that to people people will listen that little bit better as well no matter who's in front of you, you'll be confident enough that you'll have something to give. What I've noticed on this one is that if I say to someone who can tree ball juggle, will you show the group how to tree ball juggle? I've never seen someone who'll say, no, I don't want to do it. They always want to be able to display the skills they have because that they have that level of confidence. 
And sometimes what we don't see is the physical change is the one thing, but it will never, ever, ever happen without a massive mental change first. You cannot change physically without first mentally changing. And it unlocks new levels of self-belief, self-motivation, self self-confidence, and so forth. Touching on that as well, if you don't have a novel stimulus, then we miss out on being a beginner again. Being a beginner offers, offers endless opportunities. The last thing we want to do, lads, is get really comfortable in the gym, just doing the movements that are comfortable towards us. Because if we do that, we stagnate. And remember, there's no such thing as staying the same. You're either going forwards or you're going backwards. If you stay the same and you think that you're actually just maintaining something, then you're really, really only fooling yourself. So open up your mind. Be prepared to fail. Be prepared to drop a few balls. Be prepared to look like a bit of an idiot. It's, it's all part of life. Once you get over that and you unlock that, that ego and you put that aside and you start being a beginner again, then you'll start moving forward again as well. The concept that you can rewire your brain and achieve whatever you want is a ticket to freedom, essentially. If someone says to me, Michelle Lowe is a perfect example of, of this one. Michelle, when she came into the gym, she thought she was uncoordinated. Michelle is not by any means uncoordinated, and she has rewired her brain. And I've seen her there Tuesday um, doing a deadlift set, like over 20 reps with, I think it was 40 or 50 kilos on the bar, perfect spinal mechanics, really good biomechanics. And, you know, if she wasn't coordinated, then she wouldn't be able to do that. And remember, Henry Ford said that whether you think you can, whether you tell yourself you can, or whether you tell yourself you can't, you're probably right. So no matter what you tell yourself, that's essentially what you're going to act, you know. And Tony Robbins said you shouldn't believe everything you think. So moving on, the targets, how are we actually going to achieve them, all right? Well, my proposition is really, really, really simple, okay? First of all, you need to have the will. Persistence and consistency are key. They are key. We will not achieve it or achieve any one of the, one of the targets doing falling on and off the wagon. So what I'm going to ask you to do is make a decision and take action every day at every opportunity. So what we're going to say here now is 15 minutes a day for the next 15 days. So three five-minute blocks a day or one 15 minutes. What I've noticed about um, I'm going to use the example of Rachel and Michelle, is they're really accountable to each other. They have, whether they, whether they realize it or not, whether it's something that they're consciously done, they have this accountability partnership that's gone on all the time. As do people when they partner up and they do work in, work in the squat rack together, you know what I mean? No matter who it is, have that partner where someone is pushing you, someone is pulling you, someone is encouraging you, and you will reflect through their um, accountability. Lent is a good opportunity to do this. Lent is 40 days. We're not going to go 40 because, you know, 40 is a lot of long time for some people. We're just going to go with 15 days to start. And events. We're going to look at an OBF um, Olympics later on in the next couple of weeks and uh, keep tuned for that one as well. <clears throat> what I've noticed is humans are heavily influenced by seeing other people doing something. Like, just look at the kids when they come in. Look at Catherine's kids when they come in. Look at um, my kids when they come in. When they see someone else doing it straight away, they try to mimic. Now, that can be either a positive or a negative. And if we try to play the game of self-improvement, and if we try to encourage other people to play the game of self-improvement, then we're improving our homes, we're improving our community, and we're putting our little step on improving society. Like, just think of circus. Circus has existed for millennia. Strongman has existed for millennia. Juggling, um, slacklining tightrope walking, whatever it is. Just look at All-Ireland Final, Champions League. It's all um, being influenced by seeing someone else doing something. But be that person. Try to be the person that's actually being the influencer. And be the example for your children, your family, and your friends. So what exactly are the targets? We've spoken about this time and time again. Again, mobility to be supple. Um, Elliot Hull says, tight body, tight mind. And... If your body is stiff and tight, generally speaking, that means that you don't value um, mobility. And I've noticed this. I've seen this all the time. I've seen it very, very common. It's very common for this to see. If you look at men who do yoga, if you look at people who think outside the box, they're generally more open to change. Um, being skillful, uh, coordination is connecting the brain to the hands and the feet. Okay, whether it be through handstands, whether it be through parallel bar work that I'm doing on the bottom of the 
um, picture down there, whether it be through juggling, through hacky sack, through balance, through learning languages, through learning new skills, learning music, no matter what it is, being skillful means that our, grown, our brain is growing and the plasticity of our brain is there well into our, um, to nearly to the day we die. So force essentially is strength, um, our ability to create force at different speeds, different angles. You see that on the SNC program we're doing at the moment, um, four by twos, um, different rates of force production, and our stamina, our work capacity, our endurance, developing our base of strength, strength endurance, energy systems, and so forth. So the actual targets, we've been through these before. What I want you to do is pick your level, okay? Mobility, skill, strength, and endurance. I spoke about this. There is um, no point being able to hit level four strength and be on level one mobility. Okay, we want to uh, progress mobility, skill, strength, and endurance together at the one time. The other side of that is there's no point being really mobile but being really weak. You don't want to be a stick insect who can do handstands but not being able to body weight um, squat. We really want to create the ultimate, um, the ultimate rounded athlete in every way that we can. Okay, so our mobility, five minutes deep squat. Um, can you touch your toes? You know, move on to level two. Can you spend 10 minutes in a deep squat position? Can you get your fist to floor? Okay, level three, can you do a 16 kg overhead squat? Can you go palms to floor with a standing pike? These are the questions I want to ask you, you to ask yourself. Okay, skill. Can you do a bench tuck hold for 30 seconds? Can you hang for 90 seconds? Can you do a 30 second um, nose to wall handstand? Can you do a headstand? Can you do a bottoms up press? All these are building grip strength, building core strength, but most of all, they're building mental strength because they are pushing us out of our comfort zone and asking us to accept new challenges, okay? So pick whatever it is. We don't move on to level two until we have achieved what's on level one. So what I want you to do, I'm going to post this up on the Facebook page later on today. I want you underneath this to actually link in and post your level and what you're going to put your time into for the next 15 days. Once you do that, we can put up little videos, myself and Dara, around how you, we can help you with that. But unless we know, we can't help. So action, it's 15 for 15, 15 minutes for 15 days. Outline your target and your daily plan, 15 minutes a day, whether you want to do 15 straight minutes or you want to do three sets of five minutes. And ask questions on the Facebook page. Remember, knowledge is the precursor to change. If you don't have the knowledge, then you will never be able to create the change, okay? Pick your level, pick your goal, pick your target. Hopefully, we'll see you on Monday night with Michelle and uh, Rachel for their talk. Thank them again for that. And I'll be back next week with a different webinar. Let's cool you up.